Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor, here with random reviews from the Overflow Room, which is starting to fill up. We're getting there. We're putting them back here and over here. Someday I'll be out of this corner. We're on the letter V, but sort of toward the beginning-ish of the letter V. And there's Finster doing her usual thing in the back there. Hello, dear. Um, this, it, for this first particular chat in the at the beginning of the letter V, <laughs> the first one in a series of V, E, and V, A people. Hi. Um, yeah, I have four discs, four very interesting discs that cover an unbelievable range of music. And that's the fun thing about hanging out here in the overflow room. In a very short period of time, we're going to cover a tremendous amount of music. And I think that's part of the fun of doing this. Just looking at the enormous breadth over the centuries of music that we have at our fingertips through the modern miracle of recorded sound. Yay. First, Orazio Vecchi. No, we're going to get to him, but he's not first. First is, is, is this guy, Veracini, Francisco, Francesco Maria Veracini. Now, this is interesting. This I haven't even opened. I've never opened it because I've never had to. These are Veracini overtures, um, one, two, three, four, and six, with Musica Antigua Köln and Reinhard Goebel. Now, this is licensed, this thing. Does it say where it's licensed from? I mean, it was, it was a Deutsche Grammophon recording, sure. DG Archive, and I remember when this came out. I really remember when this came out um, because it was pushed quite hard by, by Deutsche Grammophon. And the product manager at Deutsche Grammophon was an ex-student of mine at Stanford University. Uh, and he was very, very good at what he was doing, I think. And uh, he, he thought this was like the bee's knees. And this was part of the period instrument movement's efforts to create like the next four seasons or the next Brandenburg concertos. You know, they were, they were, they, these period instrument groups were doing marvelous work, really, you know, digging up all of this lesser known Baroque music by composers who were a big deal in their day. I mean, you know, Vericini was a name. He was a somebody. His music is characterful and it's interesting um, and it's very Baroque. I mean, it sounds very Baroque, but you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, with all of this Baroque stuff coming out, there was really a limit to how much you could do to differentiate one Baroque guy from the next Baroque guy. Because, well, you know, you don't want to say, you know, that it all sounds kind of the same, but it all kind of does. It's mostly for strings. Sometimes there's another instrument attached to it. And you've got that harpsichord continuo clanging away on the bottom. And it is what it is. I mean, it's true that if you spent a lot of time listening, really serious listening, you might be able to begin to understand some of the distinctiveness that differentiates one composer from another. I mean, they, they have their own qualities. But the amount of time and effort that you spend in getting there, when you're listening to music which is really not profound in any particular way, it's just there to be pleasant, um, most people don't have the energy to do that sort of thing. And I don't blame them a bit. So that's why this Veracini disc, first of all, it wasn't really followed up. There's not tons of Veracini out there. There's some, there is some, uh, but not scads, number one. And number two, um, it got licensed rather quickly to Brilliant Classics, which is why I never opened it, because I have the original DG Archive one sitting around upstairs somewhere. And now there's that big Reinhardt Goebel box and it's in there too. So, you know, but I figured, yeah, you know, I might as well get this. It's out, it was out of print. And who knew? It was on Brilliant Classics. So there he goes, Veracini, right before Verdi. And then we have Orazio Vecchi. Now, I like Vecchi because when I was in high school, in, our, in college, pardon me, in the Johns Hopkins University Glee Club, we did some Orazio Vecchi. I was really, it's really pretty music, fun to sing. Uh, he wrote madrigals, primarily, and what we have on here, his, his years were 1550 to 1605, we have Lampi Parnasso, Commedia Armonica, or a madrigal comedy, 
which is really rather interesting. You know, it's, it's an opera, essentially, but told in a series of madrigals. And these madrigals are wonderful and modal, and they sound just terrific. And there's also some, some uh, excerpts from his The Musical Banquet, Il Convito Musicale of 1597, with the ensemble Clement jean under Dominique Vis, who is a haute contre, as they say in French. But uh, boy, uh, this is fun stuff. I, I, I really like this guy. There's not a lot of recordings of his music. I mean, individual madrigals, yes, but he hasn't really received systematic treatment. And he was one of the you know, great Italian madrigal guys at that cusp between you know, the late, late Renaissance and the Baroque period, just as the you know, Baroqueisms were starting to Baroque out, if you know what I mean. I mean, within a few years of this, we would have Monteverdi's Orfeo, the world's first opera, and uh, really rather cool. And don't tell me the first opera was Jacopo Perry's Eurydice. It was, it was Monteverdi. It's the only one we care about, close enough, you know, it's within a few minutes of each other. So anyway, Orazio Vecchi is fun to have, and I stuck that up there. Then we've got this lovely disc of Benjamin Britten and John Veal, Violin concertos. The John Veal is a premier recording. He was born in 1922. Very good composer. Um, it's a lovely work, well worth hearing. The Britain, of course, is a masterpiece that nobody pays any attention to. It's probably his best instrumental concerto, I think, overall, but it ends quietly with a big long passacaglia. So nobody wants to hear it. It's a shame. It's been recorded a billion times, of course. So this is a lot of fun. And um, it's worth having for the Britain and the Fields with Lydia Mordkovich. And uh, let's see, the BBC Symphony under Richard Hickox. Lovely. I mean, you know, one of these things, this is one of those ones that nobody talks about because people don't like their veal. And their veal with Parmesan, you know. John Mills' veal spelled differently. He has an E. And then, well, look at this. Sarah Vaughan. <laughs> Sarah Vaughan with Quincy Jones and vocal, jazz vocal classics on Mercury. Oh my, oh, it says the thrill is gone. I love the thrill is gone. And we've got, what else have we got? Oh, hey there from the pajama game and deep purple, the days of wine and roses and it could happen to you. Yeah, I mean, this is great stuff. Absolutely wonderful. Now I have those big Sarah Vaughan boxes that they issued on Mercury. I've got them sitting still in the other overflow room. They haven't, they haven't migrated yet. Um, I suppose they're going to have to at some point. So um, this would have been in one of those, but for some reason before I got those big Saravon boxes or maybe after, I don't know, this popped up and I grabbed it because I really enjoyed Saravon. So there we have Saravon. And those four things are all coming to you from the overflow room. And next, well, we have the big Vaughn person coming. So get ready, folks. That's going to be a project. Keep on listening, and thanks so much for joining me. Take care.